My sermon passages are Numbers 11, chapter, rather verses 24 to 29, and Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. First, Numbers 11, 24 to 29. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was upon him and put it upon the seventy elders. And when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did so no more. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad, and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested upon them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the minister of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. And now Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. And they were amazed and wondered, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians and Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. These men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, yea, and on my manservants and my maidservants in those days I will pour out my Spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and manifest day. And it shall be that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God grant us wisdom and courage for interpretation. <clears throat> I want to read a statement from the National Officers of the United Church of Christ with which the Presbyterian Church USA is in full communion and which ordained me. The statement is already dated, but listen. The Holy Spirit gave them utterance and they said, a man was lynched by police in Minneapolis this week. George Floyd was lynched on the streets of Minneapolis, Minnesota, with the knee of an officer who needed no noose. As comrades looked on, reminiscent of the public lynchings of the past, George Floyd pleaded for breath for over five minutes as the callous vigilante actions of four officers, hooded in blue, ignored his plea. The unrestrained white rage that stalked Colin Kaepernick taking a knee on AstroTurf to protest violence against black bodies escapes this country's watchful gaze as an authorized officer takes a knee 
on the throat of a black man pinned to the asphalt. Is this how white supremacy preys? A man was lynched by vigilantes in Brunswick, Georgia on February 23rd this year. Ahmad Arbery's life was choked from his body by bullets plowed through his chest, fired from the gun of white vigilantes self-deputized to guard white fragility from the threat of a black man free enough to run where he chooses as comrades looked on. No charges were filed initially, and we might never have known, except such violence is never fully satiated without public display. The taping of their triumph sealed their fate. Is this how white supremacy celebrates? A woman was lynched by police in Louisville, Kentucky on March 13th this year. Breonna Taylor's sleep was interrupted by death as officers broke into her home unannounced and riddled her body with eight bullets in search of a black man who did not live there and was already caged. Brianna was an EMT, risking her life daily for the well-being of others. Her profession placed her at high risk for COVID-19. Her black body placed her at a higher risk for the death she endured. Brianna's work was essential. Her life was not. White supremacy is not simply an ideology. It is an evil. It is not simply born of ignorance, but also of intention. This religion of white supremacy is so deeply seated in the blood-wrenched soil of our country that white people will do anything to protect its fragile roots. Black bodies are lynched by police in America so that white supremacy can breathe. White fragility can rage and white entitlement can pretend not to see. A black man was almost lynched in Central Park this week. Amy Cooper intended to steal his breath. She knew the gravity of a white woman's plea to be saved from the throes of a black man in America. Her words were deliberately weaponized with fragility. White women's tears are their own eyewitness. She knew exactly what she was doing so much so that she warned the victim that she was armed with whiteness and would weaponize it if he did not submit to her demands. This is what stand your ground looks like for those who believe they actually own the ground. Murder by law enforcement is the insidious mutation of vigilante lynchings. Both public executions are violations of the Fourth and Fourteenth Amendments, violations too often upheld by the highest court in this land but state-sanctioned murder carries the endorsement of our judicial system for America to be at war with itself. The authority to savagely murder black people and mutilate their bodies in public disp displays suggests the desire to stop a power beyond one's ability to kill. How many bullets does it take to stop, to stop a black body? How long must a chokehold last to make the weak feel powerful? when confronted with a resilience that cannot be comprehended. Too often images flood our screens of whiteness raging out of control. Picnics and postcards with lynched bodies on display have been replaced by live streams and private videos with the murdered on display. We can no longer suffer the luxury of looking away. We must speak truth with power for the salvation of all. Black people were lynched in America yesterday, and all the yesterdays before. Lynched by vigilantes who stand their ground. Lynched by religious zealots that have whitewashed God. Lynched by the silence of white liberals. Lynched by, their sworn, by those sworn to serve and protect. And yet, as we enter the season of Pentecost, we are reminded that the breath of God still blows where she wills. The fire of God's righteousness still burns within those who believe. The power of God still emboldens us to tear down every stronghold, and the will of God still reigns supreme. In the strength of that power, we must be compelled to speak up, stand up, and show up. In Minneapolis, in Brunswick, in Louisville, in New York, in Ferguson, in Cleveland, in Baltimore, in Chicago, and I'll add Oklahoma City, and in every city across the land. Somehow, we must garner the strength to call out this evil. 
we must bolster the courage to face this head-on and call it by name. Only when we choose to face the evil can we cast it from our collective being. This is the work of the entire church. We are called to uproot white supremacy in all of its forms. Whiteness must no longer be our God. Justice was lynched in America yesterday. But thanks be to God, justice refuses to die. Signed, the National Officers of the United Church of Christ. God bless them. It is a somber Sunday, this day of Pentecost. So I want to observe it rather than celebrate. There's a little play on words there. We should all observe it, as in commemorate it, but today we should observe it like a storm chaser watches a dangerous storm, from up close, if not from inside, because we are inside. With the coming of the Holy Spirit came holy chaos. That's clear from the passage from the Acts of the Apostles. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? And in more ancient days, when the Spirit came, it was more than enough for Moses and the children of Israel. The Spirit went outside human bonds and beyond human expectations. The Spirit even moved a couple of people to speak truth who some other people didn't think were qualified. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the minister of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord, Moses, forbid them. But Moses said to him, Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his Spirit upon them. Dear people of the Lord, if you think somebody ought to do something, look at one another and in the mirror to see who. I mean, if you think somebody ought to say something, somebody ought to do something about the killings and the injustice and the racism and the rank meanness and stupidity of some people in power, then look at one another and look in the mirror. You're all prophets, and the Lord has put his spirit upon you, on all of us. We are all prophets. The Lord has put his spirit upon all of us, on every follower of Jesus. And then some. No Savior is coming. He already came to save all who will be saved. And he left us the spirit to enable every one of us who trust him and who are loyal to him to get the word out, the gospel, the good news. If we confess our sins... God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we confess, repent, repeat. I believe the Spirit is at work in Minneapolis and in the other cities. People desperate for justice found their voice. The Spirit of God gave them utterance. God did not rely solely on the proper authorities to prophesy in Moses' time. God does not rely solely on the church for prophecy today. Most of the church is, in fact, complicit, complicit in the sin of racism, injustice, and the evil of white supremacy. And so the Spirit of God is moving among others and giving them utterance to expose unrighteousness again, to cleanse us all from unrighteousness. God blessed the protesters last night and this morning. God protect Black Lives Matter Oklahoma City and friends and allies today at Northeast 36th and Kelly Avenue. May God bring peace to all, but not peace and quiet just for the sake of peace and quiet. May God, in collaboration with God's people, known and unknown, bring the peace of Christ that passes all understanding, harmony, wholeness, completeness, health, tranquility of life, Shalom. We pray for it. We must work for it. The violence and fires and looting and chaos are difficult for some to understand, and I do not profess to know whether that chaos is holy or unholy. Cleansing from unrighteousness is messy, dangerous, and costly. But as for those who would exploit these expressions of anger and deep need, with wanton violence and mayhem of their own making for their own purposes, may God help honest authority expose them and stop them. Now, as we consider one another and ourselves and what we should do, here are some reminders. 
the good news of the gospel is that the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, creates, redeems, sustains, rules, and transforms all things and all people. This one living God, the scriptures say, liberated the people of Israel from oppression and covenanted to be their God. By the power of the Spirit, this one living God is incarnate in Jesus Christ, who came to live in the world, die for the world, and be raised again to new life. The gospel of Jesus Christ announces the nearness of God's kingdom, bringing good news to all who are impoverished, sight to all who are blind, freedom to all who are oppressed, and proclaiming the Lord's favor upon all creation. That is straight from the Book of Order of the PCUSA. We have everything we need to do what God is calling us to do. The Book of Order further reminds us, Christ calls the church into being, giving it all that is necessary for its mission to the world, for its sanctification, and for its service to God. Christ is present with the church in both spirit and word. What is it the church is supposed to do in the struggle for justice and peace? Among other things, this. The church is to be a community of faith, entrusting itself to God alone, even at the risk of losing its life. The church is to be a community of hope, rejoicing in the sure and certain knowledge that in Christ God is making a new creation, a new beginning for human life and for all things. And the church is to be a community of love, where sin is forgiven, reconciliation is accomplished, and the dividing walls of hostility are torn down. And the church is to be a community of witness, pointing beyond itself through word and work to the good news of God's transforming grace in Christ Jesus, its Lord. Church today, Pentecost Sunday, is a day of remembrance, reminding, and renewing the movement of the Spirit in and among us. In the book of Numbers, Moses said, Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his Spirit upon them. And in the book of Acts, the Lord did. God poured God's Spirit out on all flesh. Brothers and sisters, I encourage you to contemplate the wonders in heaven above. And I encourage you to consider the signs here on the earth, the blood, the fire, and the smoke. Let the sun turn to darkness. Let the moon turn into blood. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let us pray. O Holy One, your Spirit has come to us and abides with us. Christ, our risen Lord, set his church on fire with strength and boldness. Jesus stays with us in spirit. Renew our hearts. Move us to faith. Lead us in the truth. Stand by us in our need. Take us beyond ourselves. Take us beyond our hopes. Take us beyond our fears. In the name of our Lord and Teacher, our model community organizer, and our model protester, Jesus Christ. Amen.